many different species. Each one has to, to be pruned accordingly. Uh, they're gonna be, be occupying the same space every now and then. You're gonna have to make decisions on which branch you're going to prune. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up YouTube? Welcome to the Ego Forestry Academy channel. Today's topic is, it's an important one. It's more of a philosophical topic, but I've been thinking a bit about it and I've recently posted uh, I did an Instagram post in my own personal Instagram about it I think it's it's a mistake many people make I think especially consultants in agroforestry but but I reckon uh, people who are starting out in agroforestry as well which so the topic of the video is the next step and what I mean by that is if you think about if we consider two extremes of food production one of the extremes would be a monoculture system a conventional system that has no consideration whatsoever for the health of the soil and the ecosystem and the sustainability of the system. So it's a system that's going to fail uh, as we see it happening all around the world. Right? The systems are failing, people cannot produce anymore. And many lands are being abandoned or, or production becomes financially not viable. So that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum would be, let's call it the ideal agroforestry. The ideal agroforestry would be the, the system that would do the most photosynthesis, enrich the soil the most, produce the most organic matter, Anyway, it would be the system that would provide the most benefits in terms of enriching the ecosystem. So this ideal agroforestry system, it's, it's just an idea, it's impossible to, to be fulfilled. Because it's, if, you, if you're acquainted with, with Plato's philosophy, Plato would talk about the archetypes it's for everything that exists on the physical world there is a spiritual equivalent and this spiritual equivalent is the perfect form of that thing so the ideal agroforestry is that the perfect form of agroforestry it only exists in ideals it only exists in the spiritual world So what happens is, we as, both as consultants and as farmers, we have to understand that we are on a path from one end of the spectrum to the other. I'm not saying we're all in the conventional agriculture point, but we are walking towards the agroforestry ideal and we can be that it depends on each person but each person will be in a in a given point of that spectrum and we need to always understand what is the next step that I can take or that my client can take towards the ideal agroforestry system and probably every one of us will find a sweet spot 
in that spectrum where we will be the most efficient and this sweet spot is not going to be the same for everybody some people are going to go very close to complex systems the super complex systems let's say the Agro Forscher ideal some people won't some people will remain closer to the monoculture agriculture but they will have taken a few steps and they're not going to be doing monoculture they're going to have a system that enriches the ecosystem but just not in such a fast rate such as someone who can uh, who's close to the agroforestry idea I hope you can grasp that picture of the spectrum in your mind and it's important to understand this the closer you are to the monoculture edge to the monoculture side of the spectrum the simpler the operations on the field are and the easiest the easier it is to delegate functions for example to a worker because all the operations are very straightforward and simple the more you advance towards the ideal agroforestry the more complex the operations become because you have more interactions in your system right so you're gonna have uh, different many different species each one has to, to be proved accordingly uh, they're gonna be, be occupying the same space every now and then you're gonna have to make decisions on which branch you're going to prune uh, you have to define which companion planting schemes you're gonna make which plant you're going to favor so it's just more complex so that's why each person is gonna find their own sweet spot because for each situation and context and amount of knowledge acquired and the type of production being executed at the farm you're gonna find a different sweet spot so I encourage everyone try to find your sweet spot understand that you are on that road towards the ideal agroforestry system and it is okay not to be close to the side of the agroforestry archetype the important thing is to be taking steps towards it until you find your sweet spot if at any moment maybe you ended up creating a system that's way more complex than you're able to manage it's okay to take a few steps back and start walking again. The important thing is to not be overwhelmed by your own systems. And I see that many people, they make that mistake because they, we all want to see a super complex agroforestry systems, but sometimes uh, we're not doing, we're not working as much as we can, we're not having as big an impact as we could because we developed systems that we cannot manage we don't know how to do it and we're overwhelmed by it and sure maybe we have a beautiful system with a bunch of different species but it's a very small area and I could be doing 10 times that if I would simplify it a little bit so all of this has to be weighed in in order for you to make decisions on how to work and then when you are working as a consultant this has this is even more important because you can never put your client in a position where the clients can be overwhelmed and will pretty much give up on agroforestry and this happens quite a lot the interesting thing is when I post, uh, when I made this post in in Instagram, the first comment that I received, like five minutes after I posted, was someone saying, oh, "I just read an article about an agroforestry project somewhere for vegetables production, and all the farmers abandoned the plot because it became too shaded, and they didn't know how to manage the agroforestry." 
So that's the kind of thing that happens when people do not take into account the point where the farmer stands. So you need to understand where the farmer stands. And usually the farmers are very close to the side of the monoculture, the degradation systems. Do you really expect them to, to take such a huge leap towards the, the agroforestry archetype? No, we, we have to make them take steps, one step at a time. We're teaching people how to walk when we're teaching them agroforestry. You can't just make them leap, so you have to go step by step. And as you, as a consultant, understand that my client is ready to take a bigger step and your client feels comfortable taking that step, only then can you take it. So this is something that is of utmost important, importance to the agroforestry movement as a whole and to the regenerative regenerative agriculture movement as a whole because if we don't do things like that there's going to be a bunch of agroforestry systems around the world which will be abandoned because those who are managing the system they will give up because they've taken too great a step and they are unable to do it this is something that I have I've, I've been working as a consultant for about about 10 years now and it's something that I had to work on myself a lot because it's very easy and, and common for us to project our ideals onto others and of course when somebody hires me to to, uh, to create an agroforestry project for example I can imagine beautiful things they're not always feasible and I have to understand uh, you know where my client stands and what his situation is and and act accordingly you know, sometimes I have to work without a without soil covering because it's not feasible for the client to, to, to cover the soil in the, in the beginning Sometimes I have to do only two crops. You know, I cannot always create an agroforestry system for 10, 15 crops. No, I gotta do two crops. And sometimes I don't insert trees in the system. Because maybe the, the step the farmer can take is to produce cassava with cowpea. And that's already a huge step because he was just producing cassava on bare soil recently and he oh now he's producing cowpea with the cassava he's covering the soil fixing nitrogen and uh, and harvesting an extra crop this is major major wins this is much better than proposing a system that will be abandoned in a couple of years even if the system per se would be better more complex and environmentally speaking it would be better but if it's gonna be abandoned what's the use so these are just some thoughts that I like to leave you with so you can uh, think about them and and let us know in the comments what do you think your next step is we'd love to hear and uh, I hope you enjoyed the rant uh, so if you if you're new to the channel subscribe hit the notification bell it's the best way you can help us out and if you haven't yet check out our full agroforestry course i'm gonna put a card up here if you want to support the channel consider join us joining us in patreon uh, you get access to monthly q and a's you get access to to the videos a bit earlier and some extra goodies and what else smash that like button don't forget to do that that also helps us out a lot because it helps us uh, with uh, the algorithms supposedly so you're gonna help us spread the the word to 
more people. All right, guys, I thank you for watching. I'm Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy, and I'm signing out. Peace.